How you going guys? If you just hit subscribe to my channel, I'd really appreciate it. Give the videos a thumbs up when you watch them. Appreciate your support. It doesn't cost anything to do it. I'll keep giving you guys tips. Adventure, you know, guys new to adventure riding. I'll keep giving you a few tips. Things that I feel like you should, you should know about if you're thinking about getting to adventure riding or you're just starting. Purely from experience, from a 50 plus something year old who's been adventure riding for 15 years. All right. Jeez, I'm glad I had this media mod on. This here, my GoPro mount just snapped. That's genuine GoPro. And it's bit in the dust. It's lucky I was, I, you know what, and I just come onto the tar. It bounced off on the dirt. Look at that. I'll be taking that back. Uh, something's going on with that. I'll be taking this back. That is no good. I have seen guys put hockey straps on these things, like little tie points. I, I'm going to have to do it. I just can't believe it. Anyway, it is what it is. But this, yeah, you can see here all the foam's been smashed. It survived. Make sure the recording is working on it. And it seems to be, everything's fine. I'm just out on a ride today. I just sort of felt like I had to get out and go for a bit of a ride. And I've come across a couple of uh, beginners today who don't want to go outside of sort of the, the big towns just yet. They're just learning and that's fine. I was, had a bit of a chat to them about uh, you know, doing those practice runs is really important before you start to go further abreast and put them onto my channel, Aussie uh, Adventure Rider, and showed them a map that they can do, download a map onto their GPS and showed them they're really, really keen to do that because they're a bit worried about hitting the dirt. So anyway, good news story. It was great, great to meet up with them. Max is one of the guys name is on the Himalayan. He's just new to it. Yeah, so they were just telling me the issues they were going through so I just thought you know I'd come on and talk about it and while I'm here I might as well I also told them about the ADV fest up in Dorigo and that we supply a map that is very doable for any skill level rider and the key is just to leave early before everybody else does and you'll always have that support coming up behind you. So yeah, they were really happy with the advice I gave them and I'd probably give that to all, anyone who's thinking about getting into adventure riding. That's what you do in these situations where you sort of want to go a bit further afield. Uh, join a Facebook group or whatever, or you know, try one of my maps. And if you come up to the ADV Fest, just do that. Just leave early in the morning before everybody else. Not, you know, and then you've got the support coming behind you. Never go past petrol. Yeah. It's always good to have it. <clears throat> I've only done 100 k's in the last fill. But I've got a couple hundred ahead of me. Another tip. <clears throat> you never have too much pressure. Even when the big towns aren't that far apart. So 
So if you're new to adventure riding, or you're thinking about getting into it, always place your GPS right where you can see it. And have I have two GPS. I have the Gyre app on my phone. And I've also got the Garmin. I've always done always had the Garmin and before I got the Gaia years ago I used to just carry a paper map sometimes if I'm going into areas that I don't know very well I would take the, um, my paper map my Gaia and my Garmin you got all three then. But also on the phone, you don't have to use the Guy app. You can also use the Tread app, which comes with the Garmin's. And it does sync with it. So that can be handy as well. But there's a, that's a whole other story that we could, the whole video we could go on about that on. Yeah, all right, guys. Um, I'll get that out of the way. I started riding thinking it was going to be cold this morning. It's actually quite hot, and I'll, I'll put an extra layer on. This um, tour, I'm not doing a plug for Touratech, but this Touratech suit I've got here, I've had it for years. It's really well ventilated. They're not cheap. Um, so I just. I actually don't use the outer shell that comes with it. If it rains, I've got a, just a, a light raincoat I'll throw over the top. And yeah, it's really well ventilated. And I just put one of these um, jackets underneath. You know, I mean, part of my educational series for new adventure riders. Doesn't matter what brand of jacket you have. I think. As long as it's got a bit of ventilation, you're right, you chuck on a, something like this underneath, or depends on the extreme colds you go to, you might want to get a heated vest of some kind. But, for me, this is what works. You just find what works for you. If I was going to the snow country, I'd, I'd probably throw heated grips on this. I haven't been doing a lot of really cold area riding recently, but I would definitely be more prepared. I used to just put up with it. Once I was down in um, the snowy country and I, I swear I had hypothermia, I couldn't feel my hands. My hands were all numb. They were almost frostbitten when I was new to adventure riding. So if you're new to adventure riding, just keep in mind, you've really got to Keep warm, don't put up with it because it's not enjoyable when you, you know, when you're doing it tough like that. I feel so a lot, days like this, as soon as you start getting hot, just pull over because otherwise you're just uncomfortable. You just want to be comfortable riding. This zip always has been playing up with me recently. But apparently, I think I could send this back to Touratech and I'd fix it. It's just had a lot of use, a lot of use this jack, this riding suit. Oh, can't even bloody get it done up. Sometimes it's a bit of a struggle. No, too far. There we go, got it. I do get it. Sometimes it just flicks straight on. Yeah, so look, guys, just the main thing when you're riding, one of the other main things apart from your suspension and your tyres is your riding gear. Just make sure you're comfortable. You might go and buy something really cheap because the motorbike, the guy at the motorbike shop said, oh, this is really good. But just go and 
look at ventilation. Look at, you know, for the, a lot of them have their own layers and stuff, but these Katmandu jackets, they're bloody good. And they're cheap as chips when they're on special. You've probably even got one laying around the cupboard. And that, and they pack, they pack right up. So then you're not carrying too much in your in your in your bag. But I always have that, and then I've got a raincoat for the outer. And for my legs, I've got the actual the Touratech ones, the proper ones. I do keep a set of them um, in my bag. They're a little bit bulky, but um, they do do a really good job by keeping the water out. Yeah. But you can just get any any liner, any pant liner. So yeah, anyway, we'll keep moving. It's early morning. I don't know, I haven't seen any yet. But it's definitely um, root country around here. I'm on guard, my eyes are like radars. Keeping my speed to around 80. That's what you need to do. Well, this they've um, shaken up the roos a bit. See my dual GPS set up, so I've got I better focus, I'm looking down. I'm not supposed to look down, but I've got my guy wrap open and I've got my Garmin up here. So I've got backup. And that way I know I'm also always on track if you just check both. I very rarely look down here, very rarely. Only if I start to go off track on here I'll I'll have a look down. There you go. Look at that. I was looking down. The corner came up on me. You know, but I've just calm. And just, you know, just managed it. That's a golden rule. Here I am giving you guys, you know, a lesson. I'm going to turn off the back thing. Here I am giving you a lesson. And exactly what I'm talking about just happened. That corner just snuck up on me. But I got my weight back. I used both my brakes. And I pulled up. I wasn't going too quick. So, you know, there you go. There's a valuable lesson. You know, if that could have been a lot worse if I was going a lot faster... And if I was looking down for longer. So I was giving an example of showing my GPS, which I should never have done. But, you know, I managed it. I wasn't going too fast. But, you know, you just learn to, learn your, learn to know how to use your bike and its brakes and how it feels for everything. I've based a lot of this video on safety for adventure riding, especially if you're new to it or if you're just starting to ride on your own. Um, <clears throat> you know, there's the GPS tips that I gave about looking, having your GPS positioned, <clears throat> excuse me, right where you can see it, in your line of sight, because you don't want to be looking down. And as I was making my instructional video, I was actually looking down to make a point and a corner came up on me and I... I it's lucky I understand how this bike works and, and I've ridden it enough to know how it handles and how to make it stop quickly and if I need to slide it around or whatever. Um, getting to know your bike is a very important part of rider safety. <coughs> Having it set up correctly. Having your suspension done. If you have a bike that's under suspended, it's not just going over the bumps. That's when you're braking as well, and especially in emergency situations where the bike will handle and perform. And I use Tech Technic 
in Sydney to do my suspension. Nick's been doing it for years. It's, it's not a shameless plug. Nick doesn't pay me to, to say that, but he does a great job on the bikes. So having your bike set up, your suspension is the most important part. Having a GPS positioned in line of sight so you don't have to look down and lose track. You can, you can just keep looking up and your eyes just on that line all the time. You don't have to worry too much about that. Really good set of tyres, very important, and ultra heavy duty tubes. So I use Motos Traxinator on the back, I use a Pirelli Scorpion Rally on the front. Yep. That's what it is, yeah, Scorpion Rally Race. Scorpion Rally Race, I finally got it right. That'll save you getting punches. Um, I'm sure there's other brands out there that, you know, I, I like to run tubes, even in tubeless rims, I like to run tubes. But everyone's different, everyone has their own opinion on that. Uh, that's fine. Um, another... especially if you start to ride on your own and stuff, there's there's things, you just gotta know your bike inside out. You gotta be able to change a tire confidently and there's little tips you can do, you know, if you do get a flat, if you're not running ultra heavy duties and you, whatever, for whatever reason, a nail goes through your tire. You can leave it in the sun for a while, let it loosen up and then, you know, use your levers and crack it around and replace your tube or, or um, repair it, whichever. And make sure you have the right tools for your bike. The right tools that fit your bike. Just always work on my bike in the garage with the tools I take with me. Um, so that's up to you how you want to do it. But when I'm changing my wheels over and stuff and I'm going to, I take my wheels off and take them to the, the bike shop and get them to put tires on because I like to put my wheels back on because I know it's done properly. The way that I know, you know, how, how I want it to be done. But, you know, there's guys that just like to drop it off and, and have it done. You know, it's the drop your bike off, that's fine. Whichever, whatever whatever makes you happy. I'm not trying to tell you what to, what to do. These are just tips that I'm passing on. Yeah, there's just one other thing that I forgot to mention is my EPIRB. I usually carry uh, two. I've got, a, you know, a, a yellow EPIRB that you often see on the side of my riding jacket. And then I've also got a spot tracker that, if I go out west, I activate the subscription on that. But the Aussie EPIRBs, you don't need a subscription on. But they don't do tracking. They just, you know, send help. But I also like to have that redundancy you know, in case I do come off and one doesn't work or I can't reach it, I've got another one just, you know, in a different position. Normally just in my tank bag, one on me on the side. Anyway, um, that's just what I personally do, especially when I'm riding on my own, which I tend to do a lot of. I used to ride in big groups and stuff, and occasionally I do. But where I'm at in my adventure riding, journey I guess if you, that's, that's what you want to call it I I should, do choose to ride solo a lot but you know that's that's just me don't forget to like and subscribe I'm trying to build my membership I really appreciate it, it doesn't cost you anything thanks for watching beauty